Hi everyone, welcome back to SAT zero two one. In this lesson, we are going to talk about polynomial functions. So first, let's look at the definition. So this is the standard form of a polynomial. So the x here is the variable, and all the coefficients from a n to a zero, they are real numbers. And there is another thing you have to be careful. So for all the exponents, they must be whole numbers. And let's see two functions. The first one, f x equals three over two x to the power of five, plus five x squared plus three. So all the coefficients are real numbers, and all the exponents are whole number. So it is a polynomial function. So for the second one, f x equals four x to the power of one over two, plus five x to the power of negative two plus three. So we can see that the exponents there is one fraction, one over two, and there is also a negative number, negative two. So the second function is not a polynomial function. And now let's introduce the degree and leading coefficient. So still the standard form. Written in descending order, so the degree of the polynomial is the greatest power of x. So that is the n here, and the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the greatest power term. So it is a n here, and the a zero is our constant term. So let's see two examples. So f x equals three over two x to the power of five. Plus five x squared plus three, so the greatest power is five. So five is the degree of this polynomial, and the coefficient for the term is three over two. So three over two is the leading coefficient, and for the second one, we can compare the two exponents. Six is the greatest one. So the degree of the second polynomial is six, and the coefficient for the term is zero point three five. So zero point three five is the leading coefficient. Now let's see the graph of polynomial functions. So there are four scenarios. The first one, if the polynomial has a positive leading coefficient and odd degree, we may use a cubic function as an example. So we can see that the graph extends to quadrant one and quadrant three. So that is the end behavior of this function. And for the domain, we can see that the graph extends to positive infinity and negative infinity. So x belongs to all real numbers. And for the range, we can also see that the graph extends to positive infinity. And negative infinity, so y also belongs to all real numbers. And then we can see the possible x-intercepts. Suppose this is our x-axis, so there is only one x-intercept. And if we move up the x-axis a little bit, there are two x-intercepts, and then three x-intercepts. And then back to two x-intercepts, and then one x-intercepts. So we can see that the minimum number of x-intercepts is one, and the maximum number of x-intercepts is three. So the number of possible x-intercepts is from one to the degree of the function. Scenario number two: positive leading coefficient and even degree. So we may use a fourth power polynomial function as an example. So let's see the end behavior. The graph extends to quadrant one and quadrant two. And for the domain, we can see that x can extends to positive infinity and negative infinity. So x belongs to all real numbers, and then we can see the range. 
So there is a minimum point. So y is greater or equal to the minimum point. For the number of possible x-intercepts, so suppose this is our x-axis, there is no x-intercepts. And there is one x-intercept, and there is two x-intercepts, three x-intercepts, and four x-intercepts. Back to three, and back to two. So we may see these kind of situations. So the maximum number of possible x-intercepts is four, which is the degree. And the least number of possible x-intercepts is zero. So the number of possible x-intercepts is from zero to the degree of the polynomial function. And the third scenario, negative leading coefficient and odd degree. So similarly, it extends to quadrant 2 and 4. And the domain is also x belongs to all real number. And the range is also y belongs to all real numbers. And the number of possible x-intercepts is also from 1 to the degree. The fourth scenario, negative leading coefficient and even degree. So the graph now open downwards. So the end behavior, the graph extends to quadrant 3 and 4. And the x still belongs to all real numbers. The range now is y is smaller or equal to the maximum number. And the number of possible x-intercepts is still from 0 to the degree. And let's summarize all the information in this table. And feel free to take a screenshot if you want. All right, so let's move on to multiplicity. So multiplicity is the number of times a zero of polynomial function occurs. Suppose we have a polynomial function fx equals x to the power of 3, x minus 2, x plus 3 to the power of 2, x minus 4. So we can identify the multiplicity based on the exponents. So let's see the zero of this polynomial first. So we have 0, 2, negative 3, and 4. And now let's see their exponents. So for 0, the exponent is 3. So x equals 0 has a multiplicity of 3. And similarly for the 2, it has exponents of 1. So the multiplicity is 1. And for negative 3, the multiplicity is 2. And for the 4, the multiplicity is 1. So how does the multiplicity affect the graph of the function? So if the multiplicity is 1, the graph passes through the x-intercept directly. And if the root has a multiplicity of 2, the graph touch the x-intercept and then bounce back. And if the x-intercept has a multiplicity of 3, then the graph pass the x-intercept, but flatten a little bit. OK, so let's do one practice. So a polynomial px has three x-intercepts at negative 1, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. And the y-intercept of the polynomial is 0, 4. The graph below is the polynomial. Find the equation of the polynomial. So as we know the x-intercepts, we can write the function as fx equals a x minus negative 1 to the power of a number, x minus 1 to the power of a number, and x minus 2 to the power of a number. And now let's see the three roots there respectively. So for the negative 1, the graph touch the negative 1 and then bounce back. So x equals negative 1 has a multiplicity of 2. 
and for one zero, the graph passes through one zero but flatten a little bit. So x equals one has a multiplicity of three. And for x equals two, the graph passes through two zero directly. So x equals two has a multiplicity of one. So let me simplify the function a little bit. So that is f x equals a x plus one squared x minus one cubed and x minus two. And now let's try to find the a. So there is another information given the y-intercept is 0, 4. So we can substitute x equals 0 and y equals 4 to the function. So 4 equals a, 0 plus 1 squared, 0 minus 1 cubed, 0 minus 2. So when we solve the equation, so a equals 2. So our polynomial is 2x plus 1 squared, x minus 1 cubed, x minus 2. And that's the end of this lesson. See you then.